My name is Eric Michael and I've sold over $5 million in sports cards and I make these videos because sports cards changed my life and I'm on a mission for it to help as many people as humanly possible and I love to make these videos about cards I buy, why I bought them so you can kind of see my thought process. Hopefully you can learn from it and not make the same mistakes that I made getting into sports cards because it took me years and years and years to make it extremely profitable. And I'm gonna go over this card behind me, this card of Joe Burrow, and why I actually overpaid for it by almost a thousand dollars, and I'm gonna lose a bunch of money on it, and I couldn't be happier. So I bought this card at the National Card Show, okay? This card of Joe Burrow, I paid $6,500 for this card, which is a little overpriced. If you look right here, this is a site called Alt, that will tell you what cards have sold for. And you can see there's one sale in March, which is a few months ago, and it sold for $5,800. This is a BGS9 that sold for about $5,800. And usually a BGS9 and a raw card are usually about comparable, okay? So like maybe the card I paid was worth about 6,000, but I paid 6,500 for it. So I overpaid by probably $500 give or take, but why would I do that? Well, it's because I was actually getting the card graded. And if you look here, check this out. Last year, January 19th, 2023, a PSA 10 sold for $15,000. So if the card I just bought graded a 10, I'd make eight to $9,000 in profit. But when I was going through this and I was deciding if I should buy it or not and how much money I was making, I wasn't sure because this sale of Joe Burrow was in 2023, the PSA 10. And I was like, hmm, well, Joe Burrow, a lot has happened to him in the past year, right? He got a surgery, he had a nasty injury, his value went down. So I knew the card is worth about 6,000 to 6,500 to $7,000 right now, but what would the card be worth if it graded a 10? And this is how I came to that conclusion. So this is what I did to determine what this card as a PSA 10 would be worth today. And if you look right here, these are the sales of a Joe Burrow Prism Silver PSA 10. And why do, why do I care about this? Like, why do I care about this card right here? Well, it's because this is a commonly sold card, a lot more common than the card I was looking to purchase at the National Card Show. The card I was looking to purchase was number to 25. So there's only 25 of them in the world. In the world, They only get sold once every few months. So it's not an accurate depiction of Joe Burrow's market. But this card is. You could see here in 2023 what this card was selling for in January, right? It was selling for about 2,600, 2,400, 2,400, 2,800, 2,900, uh, 3,100, 2,400, 2,500, right? So if you average that out, you know, it sells for about like 25, 2,600. And why am I looking at the sales in January of 2023? If we go back to the card I was looking at to purchase, the PSA 10 sale, right, was in January. So I wanna see what this card was selling for in January and how much its values went down. And if we go back to the Silver Prism PSA 10, let's look today, right? So let's do the math. In January, let's write this down. January 2023, the card was selling for about right, call it 25, sorry for the sloppy handwriting, $2,500, right? And now look what it sells for today, right? It sells for about 1940, 1845, 1850, 2000, 2040. Let's call it $2,000. So today, this card is worth about $2,000. So what does this tell us? If this card in January of 2023 was 2,500 and now, it's worth $2,000. If you do the math, right, and you do 500, I know we're getting into math here, divided by 2,500, this equals 0 0.2. So what does that tell us? Joe Burrow's value has went down 20%, right? 20% since last January. All right, so let's go on this whiteboard here, or blackboard, and let's break down all of this math, okay? so. Stay with me because this is about to be a lot of math, okay? So bear with me here. If you're enjoying the content of the video and wanna learn how to make a side income with sports cards, I spent the past three months putting together a training to show you exactly how it's done 
in detail. Sports cards has allowed me to live a life beyond my wildest imagination, and I'm thankful for the hobby every single day. That is the reason I teach sports cards, and I'm so passionate about it. At the end of the training, we offer a paid program where you can work closer with me. However, I do not want you joining until you've watched the training I put together. It will show you exactly what's inside the program and how to make money with sports cards, and from there, you can make an educated decision. If you'd like to sign up for the training, either scan the QR code on the screen or text the word ERIC to 973-755-9486 or click the link in the description. Just to repeat it, if you'd like to sign up and watch the training, scan the QR code or text ERIC to 973-755-9486 or click that link in the description. Now let's get back to the video. March. 2024, a BGS9 did about $5,800. Fantastic. January 2023, a PSA 10 did about, what was it, 14 to $15,000? It was like $15,000. Fantastic. However, what did we discover? Well, we discovered Joe Burrow's value, Joe burrow value is down 20 percent right so in january of 2023 if this value is down 20 percent since then that means a joe burrow so championship ticket right that's the name of the card i bought championship ticket would be worth today it would be worth 20% less than this. So what's 20% less than 15,000? Well, that is $12,000, right? So $12,000. So this is what a PSA 10 is worth today. Fantastic, right? So let's break down this math a little bit more. Keep this number in mind, $12,000, very important, okay? Okay, so this is the way the math breaks down here, right? I ended up paying $6,500 for the card. So I overpaid for it, okay? But this is why I overpaid for it. Now, we just discovered a PSA 10 today is worth $12,000, right? One did about $15,000 back in January, right, of 2023, and we discovered, looking at a silver prism PSA 10, his value is down about 20%. That's how we get to 12,000. Now, if this card grades a 10, rough estimate here, but I'll make about $5,000, all right? If the card does not grade a 10, I'll probably lose around a thousand. Okay. So you guys might be looking at this and saying, Eric, you're an idiot. Who'd want to lose a thousand dollars? I was able to look at this card in person and it looked pretty solid. And I gave myself about a 40, I said about a 40% chance this card grades a 10. So check this out. And I know I'm really getting into math here, but there's something called expected value. $5,000 profit and a 40% chance of that happening. If you times those two together, you get 2,000, okay? And now there's a 60% chance of me losing $1,000, right? So there's a 40% chance of me making 5,000, there's a 60% chance of me losing 1,000, okay? And 60% times 1,000 would be 600. So in the world of math, right, there's something called expected value, you can put these two together and it will tell you if you ran this simulation over a million times, what your average profit would be. And my average profit would be 2,000 plus minus 600, and that equals 1,400. So what this number means, 1,400, the average, if I bought this card a million times and sent it in for grading a million times, that's what my average profit would be. Not bad. Now, obviously, this is a little subjective because I'm kind of guessing here that there's a 40% chance it'll grade a 10. I actually, I, I try to be conservative with these values. I actually gave it about a 50-50 shot. Now the card did not grade a 10, so I'm gonna lose about $1,000 on it, which is okay, because it, sports cards kind of like poker, right? It, poker is a game of just making more right decisions than wrong decisions. And even though I knew that there was a chance, I'm gonna lose about $1,000 because I am, because the card didn't grade a 10, that's perfectly okay because I made the correct decision. And if you buy 20 cards and make the correct decisions with each of them, some you'll win, some you'll lose, 
But in the long run, you're gonna make a lot of money making good decisions like this. Now, this is a higher end card, so like, there's a little bit more math that goes into it when I buy it. But this is how sports cards works. If you know what you're doing, you know how to evaluate the condition, know what's gonna go up, what's not gonna go up, because also there's a little bit more into it, like Joe Burrow I thought could go up in, in August, right? So I'm putting myself with, with, my, with the wind at my back, saying like, hey, like there's a good chance not only will this card grade to 10, but it'll appreciate. And even if it doesn't grade to 10, which it didn't, maybe I won't lose all, maybe I won't lose $1,000. Maybe I'll only lose 500 because his value will go up. So this is sports cards in a nutshell, especially higher end sports cards when you're getting them graded. But this is really just sports cards as a whole, right? You are risking a minimal amount of money to make a lot of money. That's all this is, right? You're risking a little to make a lot. That's it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, let me know. Hopefully this stuff made sense. But this is all the stuff that was going through my head <laughs> in like the 10 minutes where I was do doing the deal. I've been doing this for a long time, so it's easy for me to do this stuff. Um, you'll see, you could see it in the uh, the YouTube video I posted about the National Card Show. You could see me going back and forth with the person when buying this card. I knew I was overpaying. I knew there was a chance I would lose money, but it was a risk I was willing to take because I knew it was a positive risk. And if I ran that simulation a million times, I would make money. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Any questions, feel free to shoot me a message on Instagram, comment on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.